Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to my first vlog. I decided for 2019, I want to challenge myself and record some behind the scenes footage of what it entails for me to take some of the photos that I do. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand the amount of work that goes into landscape and nightscape photography. You have to plan the logistics, you have to deal with weather, travel, waking up early, packing all this expensive gear, just a ton of things that I want to showcase in these videos so people get a better understanding and that way they realize why photographers sell their pictures for the amount of money that they sell them for and also so people could just see the passion that a lot of photographers have when they take these pictures so for this first vlog I'm at Manasquan Reservoir New Jersey and I'm trying to find a location that I can photograph star trails at night here now it's gonna be a little tricky because Unfortunately, there's no place to park, which I'll show you guys in a minute. And um, right now, let's locate a spot here that I could use for um, some star trails. So for my first vlog, I'm at Manasquan Reservoir in New Jersey, and I'm trying to find some creepy trees that I can use in my foreground with a nice star trail in the background, preferably the North Star, but it's kind of hard trying to find a location along the water's edge where I get a nice clearing. So let's take a look and see if we can find something that is usable for tonight. Uh, a bunch of sticker bushes I gotta walk through. Gosh. Yeah, we definitely don't want to go back that way. It's all sticker bushes and no clearing. This is nice, but it's in the wrong direction. You gotta find something on this side. Yeah, that tree ruins it. You know, I'm planning to use my 14 to 24 millimeter lens, and uh, I want to use a fisheye lens on a second camera, but I think that might be too wide just because of all the sticks and debris in the foreground that are really not that pleasing, I think, in the picture. So I might use a 15 to 30 Tamron for my second camera, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll just bring both to be on the safe side. It just really depends on how heavy my bag starts to get. So let's continue looking for another opening because that last one was not too good. Okay guys, I'm at this one spot that looks pretty promising. It's not ideal, but I think I can make it work. Now I have this dead tree over here and then there's some debris in the water. Some fallen trees are pretty cool that I might be able to use in the foreground. And what's awesome is this section right here is still water. So hopefully I should be able to reflect some of the star trails on this surface of the water here. But I might have to get really low just because of these branches that are sticking out. So if I'm low with the wide angle lens, it should look something like that. For those wondering how I know which way to look, I always bring a compass and that gives me a general idea of which direction to look in. I also use my phone if I have service, but this is just good to have because a lot of times we're going to places that don't have cell phone service and the compass isn't as accurate as a regular compass. So 
So as I walk along this trail, I realize there's more little side trails than I had expected, and I don't want to confuse them with the one that I want to go to, so I'm trying to take note of some landmarks. That way I have an idea of where to stop. So I put a little X with those branches, and there's a nice fallen log with a really distinct kind of uh, bark on it, so I'm gonna use that as well. And it's really close to Sassafras. So I got the one location mapped out in my head now. Let's go find a second spot. Jackpot, this is exactly what we've been looking for. It's open, there's a bunch of creepy trees. Um, there's a road back there, which is kind of unfortunate. We might have to Photoshop out some cars, but it is what it is. This is as good as it's gonna get from this spot. Uh, I looked at all the little trails and nothing is as clear and as open as this section right here. All right, so if we check my phone, which might be slightly hair off from my compass, it's saying that north is straight ahead. Um, so I can have this as a composition where I put Polaris right above this tree in the center. I could also use um, the rule of thirds and put it in the top left corner right here. If I go right, mm, not really digging that composition. So I think the best composition is going to be centered or to the left. So we'll see um, what I end up doing later. Okay, so let's find a landmark for this spot so I don't forget about it. And we got a nice sign right here. American Chestnut. So it's only a few steps away from American Chestnut sign. So there's my landmark. So we got Sassafras, American Chestnut, good landmarks to go off of. Okay, so I'm heading back to the car and I'm so happy I found those two locations for both cameras. And this is why it's a good idea to scout out your location during the day if you can. You wanna be comfortable with the location that you're going to and you don't wanna try and fumble around at night trying to figure out the best composition. So by doing this, I know I have the best spots possible and uh, come nightfall, it'll be easy peasy to get here and I don't have to look for anything except for my landmarks and go right to shooting. All right, so let me show you some challenges with parking with this place though. Okay, so here's one of the major challenges with photographing this spot. There's no place to park. And I know I'm in a parking lot right now, but they close this at 5.30 p.m. Um, so unfortunately, I have to either park along the road, which is about a half mile up the street. It's really not the best place to park because it is the shoulder. And uh, in theory, I could get a ticket or even worse towed. Uh, a lot of photographers do park there, but usually it's you know temporarily as far as parking there for several hours to take a time lapse at night uh, it's risky now it is sunday night so there should be less activity less cops so maybe that won't be an issue but worst case scenario i park at a bank parking lot about a mile away which will suck to hike in the weather because it's going to be 20 degrees tonight um, maybe i bring a bicycle or a skateboard and try and get here a little faster than walking but that is my dilemma, trying to figure out which spot to choose. So I think I'm gonna risk it and park a little closer. Um, I might even just set my cameras up and then leave them there and head back to my car and that way if a cop does come, I could always move it and um, there shouldn't be anybody else over here at night, which is another option. So we'll figure that out come nightfall, but it is one of those things I need to take in consideration and figure out before I start shooting tonight. Hmm. All right, so it's only nine o'clock now. I'm gonna head home, hit up the gym, and I'll prep my gear later for tonight, and I'll show you exactly what I'm gonna bring. See you there in a second. All right, for this photography adventure, I'm using my Rugard Thunderhead 75 bag, which is a beast. This thing could hold a lot of gear. Next, I'm bringing relatively compact tripods, my Nikon D810 and D800, a Nikon 14-24 2.8, the Tamron 15 to 30 2.8, a Sigma fisheye lens, that's a 2.8, a couple shutter release cables, 
headlamps with red lights so it doesn't diminish my night vision and numerous batteries and hand warmers because it's gonna get a little chilly tonight. Now what I love most about this large bag is its depth. I'm able to put large lenses upright and I could even stack my tripods in the center column. So I don't even have to worry about strapping them to the side of the bag or anything like that. Now before you go out shooting, I like to check the weather one more time so I know how to dress for the conditions and to make sure the skies are still clear. Make sure you check the hourly report like I've done here. And as of now, everything's looking great for tonight other than it being below freezing. Another great tool I like to use is Google Maps and Satellite View. This allows me to scout out locations before I even go there. So right along the road is a shoulder without any signs that say no parking. This is where I'll be parking for tonight and hopefully nobody bothers me there. It's about a mile walk from the location, which isn't too bad with the amount of gear I'm bringing. So let's head back to Maniswan and start shooting. All right, so hopefully this is in focus. I know the camera might struggle a little bit because it's nighttime, but I'm back at Maniswan Reservoir and I parked along the side of the road where it's a little sketchy. There's no sign saying I can't park along this road, but um, you know, if somebody sees the vehicle and decides to call the police or whatever, then I risk getting a ticket or maybe even getting towed. So what I think I might do is try and hustle down to Manasquan and bring you guys along with me. We'll set up the cameras and let them start taking the time lapse of the night sky. And then I could run back here and move my car if I have to, or just stay with it. And that that way, if the police show up, I can just tell them that I'm, you know, that I'm taking pictures and that I can move if it's a problem. And just some details about tonight's shot. It is a new moon. Um, the sunset was around 445. It's going to be around 645, 7 o'clock when we start shooting. So it'll be true night. But it is New Jersey and there's a lot of light pollution. So hopefully we still get something usable, which I think we will. So let's go, uh, let's go start shooting. So I'm almost at the parking lot. Um, there are a lot of cars driving on this road, a lot more than I expected. So I'm hoping it doesn't interfere with the photos too bad but we will see. It's a beautiful night, nice and clear. Some clouds are still uh, lingering around, so hopefully they clear up by the time I get set up. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this without blinding the camera, but we're on the trail. It's a little windy. Um, so right now it's in the 40s. It's supposed to drop down to 20s later. I got these really heavy duty insulated pants. They are down pants. I got my down jacket with uh, another layer underneath. Just trying to keep an eye out for sassafras, which there it is. Found sassafras, so that means location number one should be coming up. Hopefully you guys can see me. And there's my X marks the spot. All right, so this can be a little tricky. So this is location number one. I'm gonna have to put this down and try and set up. I'll turn it back on in a minute. All right guys, so I have my camera set up and the light pollution here is actually pretty bad, a lot worse than I was expecting. Um, I have my camera set at ISO 800 F5 and a shutter of 25 seconds and it still comes out relatively bright. I mean, the good thing is that it won't be a super noisy image. The bad thing is these star trails are gonna be very white and not really gonna have too much color to them. And I'm still kind of waiting for these clouds to die down. You know, it said it was gonna be clear, but the weather's never always right. So unfortunately I have some cloud coverage that's passing by. I'm gonna start firing up this time lapse soon and hopefully I can make something out of these, you know, out of the conditions that I have. But um yeah, it's turned out to be a little bit more challenging than I was expecting. 
Also at the first location, Sassafras, I ended up bailing on that. The, um, the tree branches were just lying too low and coming into my frame. I also just didn't like the fact that the wind kicked up and there's no more still water. Everything has a ripple to it, so I can't really get some really nice reflections of the starlight, unfortunately. Not to, to be honest, I don't even think the stars would reflect that well over here anyway because of uh, the light pollution in New Jersey, but I was going to at least try and just see what I got. So now I have both cameras set up in one spot. They're just facing different angles for two different compositions. They're gonna look very similar when I go to edit these, but um, you know, I, I want to have one with Polaris in the top left corner and one with Polaris dead, uh, dead on in the center. So now I get to do that with both cameras in this location. Okay, so right here the wind was really picking up and it was messing up my microphone. It was getting all stuttery, so you couldn't really understand what I was saying. So I decided to just talk over this clip, but basically I was explaining how I'm going to split the vlog into two parts, one with me going out and, you know, doing the, the legwork, trying to find the location and explaining that to you. And the other part of the vlog is going to be me um, doing the post-processing of the images that I'm taking on this night. So that's all I was explaining there. I'll let you get back to it. Okay, so here I am back in my van. It's still here. There's no tickets, no tow truck. Um, I left my cameras at the reservoir. They're still taking pictures. You know, for a decent star trail, you want about two, two and a half hours at the very minimum. Um, I try and shoot for three to four if I can, but with these lingering clouds, I don't know how well these star trails are going to turn out anyway. So um, I'm just going to do about a two and a half hour time lapse and we'll go from there once we see these images. Now I actually might go pull my van up right at the gate just so I'm closer to my cameras and if a cop comes I'll just tell him what I'm doing and hopefully he'll be cool with it. So this photography adventure so far has been a great example of how some things go wrong. You know I have these lingering clouds that won't go away um, regardless of what the weather report says. I had a hard time finding Polaris because of all the light pollution in the sky but I'm still going to try and make the best of the time-lapse footage that I'm going to capture. And even if I can't turn it into a star trail, it'll still be a pretty cool shot. Um, I also wasn't planning on changing one of the locations. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out composition-wise. There was too many branches uh, and the wind kicked up, which kind of ruined the still water. So it is what it is. We're going to make the best of it. And I'm still excited to see what I captured on my cameras. And uh, I hope you guys are too.